We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We believe in you, God. We trust in you, Jesus. God, you're so worthy of praise and glory today, Lord. And everybody says in Jesus' name. This week is the week before Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is next Sunday, and then Easter is the following Sunday. So pastor is asking everyone to pick a day to fast this week for leading up to Palm Sunday. So everybody pick a day to fast. Push the plate aside and, and sacrifice that. Sacrifice that food. Fast for Palm Sunday. Fast for Easter. Fast for revival. Fast for your, your lost family. Fast for this church. And when you fast, pray. Fasting and prayer go together. When you fast, you pray. Pray all day in your mind. Just pray all day. God, I pray for my family today. I'm sacrificing food. I'm praying for my family today, Jesus. Honor my fast today, Jesus. I'm praying for my lost friends. I'm praying for my loved ones. I'm praying for my pastor. I'm praying for my church today. I'm praying for Palm Sunday. I'm praying for Easter Sunday that a soul can be saved, God. That a life can be changed, Jesus. So when you fast, pray. And when you pray, fast. So pick a day this week and fast for this church, for this city, for your home. Also, he is asking everyone for a media fast this week. A media fast. Take that phone, throw it in the garbage. No, I'm just kidding. Take that phone, take that TV, whatever. Toss it aside. No, what it is, is when you put that media in, when you're watching those rails, when you're watching that Facebook, when you're watching that Instagram, it's constantly absorbing into your brain. And it is really honestly robbing you of your own thoughts. He is asking the church this week to fast from all of that. To fast from that from to fast from that world. If you're going to watch something, watch preaching. If you're going to listen to something, listen to preaching. Listen to Christian music. Put all that aside. Put the world aside and say, this week I am dedicating it to Jesus and only Jesus. I'm going to watch preaching. Get back on, you can get back on Facebook. Look up our old uh, sermons here on the Cross Church. You can uh, go back and watch uh, pastor's sermons, Christian sermons, Mark's sermons. Get on YouTube. Watch some Jeff Arnold some Lee Stone King put it in put it in in Jesus name in Jesus name so that is this week leading up to Palm Sunday and on Palm Sunday it's going to be a communion here at this church communion Sunday next Sunday so be prayed up fasted up and and Absorb the word of the Lord. Be reading your Bible. Be praying. Be fasting. And you watch and see what God is going to do next Sunday. God bless you. Come on, if you're ready to praise the Lord, why don't you look at two or three people? Slap them on the shoulder if you have to. Tell them to wake up. We're about to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, he's worthy. He's new in the morning. Grace is raining down on me. Every battle he's gonna win. Cause my God, he's got the victory. Yeah, yeah. Victory, 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 victory. I got, I got the victory. victory.
And I woke up this morning. Come on, somebody. I didn't have no doubt. You know you're happy. I knew the Lord would hey. bring me out. Hey. I fell down on my knees. And I cried, have mercy, please. Then I had to stand right up and shout. Lift your voice and say. say it, I felt the greatest high I'd ever felt in my life. Cocaine didn't do it. Jack Daniels didn't do it. Pills didn't do it. But when I got in his presence, greatest, greatest power you'll ever feel in your life, and it's here right now. Come on, lift those hands up before the presence of the Lord. My God, I feel him in this room. Come on, say. Ooh, the sun sets free.
healing people in this room right now. Come on. I'll never be the same. You ought to reach out with everything you've got right now. Since Jesus called my name. Let him heal your life. Let him heal your mind. worshiping this morning. God, thank you for meeting us at our place of need, Lord Jesus. God, as that song says, we can't be the same once you've called our name, Lord, because it's not just Jesus calling out your name. When he says your name, everything that you were before has to flee, because at the name of Jesus, every knee has to bow. Amen. Every chain has to break. Every wall has to fall. So it doesn't matter what you did before. It doesn't matter what you were in the past. When Jesus says your name, when Jesus speaks it out, when he speaks a word of life, everything that you were has to fall. It has to bow. And you are made new at the name of Jesus Christ. So why don't we sing that again this morning? You have to change the minute that Jesus says your name. When you call. I came out of that grave
Jesus, why don't we lift him up in this place again? God, we thank you and we honor you in this place, Jesus. God, whatever situation that seems impossible, I know I can bring it before your feet today. I know I can bring it before the feet of Jesus because when everybody else tells me no, when everybody else says it's impossible, when everybody else says it's a lost cause, God, you step in and you make it Jesus as though it falls before your feet, Lord. God, I magnify you and I praise you today. I know, Jesus, that there's nobody like you and there's nobody beside you, Jesus. You alone are worthy to be praised. You alone are to be exalted high above every situation that we bring with us in this place today. Hallelujah, Lord. Why don't we give another hand clap of praise unto God this morning. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done and what we know you're going to continue to do today. Hallelujah, Lord. How many likes would they feel in the house this morning? Amen. Jesus, we honor you and we praise you. As you make your way back to your seats this morning, what an honor and privilege it is to be with every one of you in church today. Whether you have been coming here for years or this is your first Sunday with us, we are all family, amen. So why don't we greet our family this morning, turn to the person next to you and say how excited you are to see them at the Cross Church this morning, amen. That's what I love about church is we can feel so alone during the week, we can feel like we're all by ourselves, but the minute that we step into this place of a place full of people of like precious faith, that we feel family, we feel connected, and we feel that we have people that are going through this life together with us. Amen. And as we make a transition this morning in our service, I want to move forward with announcements. And once again, uh, as many of you know, all of our announcements will be on the screen before service, during our offering, and after church. So please pay attention to the screens for important dates and times, and also to our Facebook page where we will post a lot of important details and events that we will be having um, because we have a lot that uh, is going on, not only in the month of March, but obviously through the whole year here at the Cross Church. We're very busy, and there's many ways that you can get involved. I do want to say a special thank you to uh, Brother Tim Justice and the ladies' department that helped us yesterday with the harvest dinner. Uh, men, wasn't that a great time? Why don't we give them a hand clap? It was a great time of fellowship, and I know I am already looking forward to next year. Amen. We ate great. Um, the ladies' department is selling peanut butter uh, and coconut eggs at the coffee station. The ladies have uh, put in a lot of work for these, and let me tell you, they are good. So if you have not gotten the opportunity to try one of these, uh, please go out there, and you can uh, purchase those at the coffee station. They are fantastic. Amen. Um, also, there's Ladies Kitchen Talk on Tuesday, uh, March 19th, and this will be at 6 p.m. That promises to be a great time of fellowship, so ladies, March 19th at 6 p.m. There's also going to be a men's work day, and this will be uh, Saturday, March 23rd. And men, um, please see Brother Randy for any details as to, as to things that you might need to bring. We're just going to be cleaning up uh, the outside of the church, making it look good for this summer, making it look good for Easter. Uh, the, we get so much out of this building from services and from God moving and everything, I think that it's important that we pour into it a little bit with our time and our appreciation of uh, what this church property means to us. Amen. So once again, men's work day, that will be March 23rd. Amen. Uh, our pillars, winter, fall, this will be a, a good time of fellowship for our pillars ministry. This will also be uh, Saturday, uh, March 23rd at 11 a.m. There will be food and games, and this will be at the Flesher's House in Williamstown. We will continue to give uh, details on that, and you can see uh, um, the Flesher's to uh, obtain any other details you might need uh, for that event. Amen. And then uh, I do want to say that today will be a memorial service for our, our beloved brother, uh, Stephen Hunt, and that will be at 2 p.m. here today at the church. And I encourage each and every one of you to make it out if you can, as he was a great part of our church, and I know a great part of many of your lives, and we want to honor him and his family today. And once again, that will be at 2 p.m. here at the church. Amen. Church, how many is ready to give this morning? Amen. If you could all stand. We have a few ways that we can give here at the Cross Church. Um, our, the best way is to give cash or check if you can, but I know that uh, online and technology is a little bit more available these days, so we also have those options as well. Um, that will be on thecrosschurch.net, and for those of you that haven't given on thecrosschurch.net yet, uh, you'll get onto our church website. You can click that Give tab, and it opens you to our Subsplash link, which directly connects you to the offering for the church, and from there, you can put in your amount 
amount that you'd like to give, how often you'd like to give it, or what uh, fund you would like to give it to, whether that be tithe, offering, children's ministry, you can select anything that you want there. So you can give online, you can give cash or check, or you can mail your offering to 1122 Market Street, Parkersburg, West Virginia, 26101. Church, let's pray. Upon the authority of your word, I have given and it shall be given to me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithes today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked and the curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not room enough to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interests and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received. We receive our family saved and walking with God, perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out. All that I do will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. Kids, you are dismissed at this time. to the Lord today. Hallelujah. Well, what a beautiful crowd in this house today. And then we'll look at this crowd in here. Some I, people keep saying, what are we going to do next week? I said, what are we going to do on Easter? <clears throat> and uh, it looks like we're going to have to get some more chairs and put them on the platform and we will fill every corner of this building. Somebody shout Amen. I called Bishop White one day. It's been a few years ago. I'll never forget. And I said, Bishop, I don't know what to do. We've needed a building since way before COVID. <clears throat> and, uh, and I said, uh, I don't know what to do. I said, it's a problem. He said, Pastor David Bounds. In that voice that he has, he said, there are good problems and then there are bad problems. You have a good problem. And so I'll take all the good problems we can get and... Um, Wow, look at all the souls in here today. Thank you for being here, and God is going to do great things today. This week, I know my wife was up here preaching earlier, and uh, she was talking about fasting. Starting tomorrow, we will be starting a media fast. One time I called a media fast when a pastor in Glen Ferris in Fayette County, and I said, we have a media fast. Right after church, somebody called me. Please don't do this. I said, Pastor, can I watch the Waltons? I said, whatever you want to do, sir. I didn't think he was going to understand anything I would say after that moment anyways. 
And so media fast is media fast. Please only watch spiritual things. Seek God this week. How many would do that? At least take one day, and I want you to fast 24 hours and give that to God. Don't eat. Drink water and give that to God. How many would do that for your pastor and for the Lord and for yourself this week? And then when we come together this uh, next weekend, we will be having communion, and we're going to have one of the greatest moves of God you've ever felt in your life. <clears throat> How many believes that we need to just separate ourselves from the world a little bit so God can move in our life? Amen. Praise the Lord. If you grab your Bibles and turn to the book of Acts chapter 28, verse 5, I will say, Bishop, we'll be back in town driving that huge RV, 41 foot long. I think it's a total of 60 feet with a vehicle. Him and Mama are coming home. Pray for Mama. They're online today, I guarantee you. But they're headed home. They should be home by the end of the week. We'll be here uh, for the next week and excited for them to be back in town. Amen. We love Bishop, don't we? Praise God. Acts 28 and verse 5. And let's, let's read this together. You ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. And he shook off the beast into the fire and fell. Let's try it one more time. And he felt no harm. I want to preach just for the next little bit. Shake off the beast. It's time to shake off some things in your life that has attached itself to you. And after this morning, you're going to leave free. Some of you might be offended, but get over it. I'm going to preach. <clears throat> Anytime I start preaching against sin, one time I was preaching against sin, about 20-some people walked out. And I was like, get on out of here, devil. I didn't say it, but I was thinking, if you, how many wants to serve God and get all that junk out? There's going to be some people that don't want to change, but I believe in this last day. There's a people of God that want to come out of this world and be separate and touch not the unclean things. Somebody say amen. Can we lift our hands and pray all over the building today that God would touch us with his word. Lift your voices with your faith right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. I pray for your anointing and I pray for your touch. By the authority of your word and the power that's in your name, God, I pray you would touch us today. Let your anointing flow in this house, God. Challenge us, strengthen us, anoint us as a church, God, to be pleasing to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And someone said, Amen. Amen. Before you're seated, look at at least one person and say, It's time to shake off the beast. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. <clears throat> Just the other day, my wife and I, we'd been... I had a barn and we sold that old barn and uh, they came, it's amazing how they can move a 40 foot building and they moved that building and we was taking all my dad's stuff where he had moved and putting it in my garage and in our outbuilding we have, we was going through and Joan, while she was cleaning that out, her and Theron were cleaning out that outbuilding, she found the remnants of a snake. Now, it wasn't dead. There wasn't a skeleton tissue or nothing. It was a skin. That means that rascal's still somewhere slithering. I, I hate snakes. I hate them. I don't care if they're purple, green, rainbow collar. I hate snakes. If it's an inch long, I'll get a 12-gauge shotgun and blow that thing. It won't be no, no there'll be DNA everywhere. I, somebody say, I hate them things. They make me cringe. I don't like fake ones. My God, I hate snakes. It, does anybody understand that the pastor hates it? I don't care what color. Somebody said, don't kill black snakes. They take I kill black ones. I kill black snakes. I kill green snakes. It, it, you got pet snakes, you freak. If you're offended, stay offended. You let that thing out, pastor's coming with a shovel. We're going to take care of it. If it has a name, I'm going to get it. Did you understand that I hate snakes? I just hate them. They, we got a chicken coop. And they're always around that chicken coop. And I'm trying to get to my message, and I don't know. I seen that picture up there, and I was like, ah. They found the skin in that building. and <clears throat> Yeah, he's somewhere on the property. Years ago, 
years ago, we was in my house, and we had bought this house, and she pulled the refrigerator out one day. And when she did in that old house we had bought fixing up, I've always said I wanted a turnkey home. I haven't had one yet. Every one I get, I've got to remodel, fix up, and yeah. <clears throat> How many knows what I'm talking about right now? A turnkey to work is what usually it is. And uh, <laughs> Rich, I pulled that refrigerator. Joe, and I heard her scream. And somehow, a snake had been in that house at some point. And I didn't know, but the, the crazy plumber, who probably didn't have a contractor's license, I guarantee you, or any training, just who did the work on the bathtub before we moved in it, cut a hole 16 inches round to put a 2-inch pipe through. A small groundhog could have got through there. A dog could have crawled up from the... Somehow, <laughs> a snake got in there and hooked its neck on my refrigerator and shedded its skin in that old house years ago in, in Golly Bridge, West Virginia. It's in my house. Did you hear the voice? It's in my house. I mean, it's okay for the snake to be in an outbuilding. I don't even want him in there. But how did he get in my house? There's some places snakes shouldn't be. And somehow it got in my, I, I just got thinking about it. I was laying in my bed thinking that thing was in there crawling around my kitchen probably. You talking about throwing a fit in the middle of the night coming in to get something to drink and see that thing? There wouldn't have been a house left. How many knows what I'm talking about? You picture your wife coming through and it, there would have been a fight in that room. There's places where snakes are, but there's some places where snakes shouldn't be. And I want to tell you today, it's time to start sealing up our home so hell can't get in. It's okay when you look out and they're out there and they're under the bridge and they're in the street. It's another thing when that snake starts coming into your kid's room. We shouldn't allow hell to come into our homes and walk in through. Come on, you wouldn't allow fornication in your house, but you'll let it come through a TV screen. You wouldn't allow a couple to fornicate in your living room, but you will on some little show. It's quiet in here now. You won't allow fornication and adultery and murder in your house. You wouldn't put up with it for one day. But you'll allow it on social media. You'll allow it in songs. You'll allow it on your... Y'all giving yourself away right now because you're not moving. But I come to preach to you and say it's time to get the snakes out of the house. It's time to get the world out of the house. It's time to clean up some stuff in our house. We shouldn't allow hell in our cars, in our relationships. Oh, give somebody a high five and say, he's preaching today. It's time to get rid of hell out of our life. We shouldn't allow those snakes to slither in. I'm telling you, hell wants to penetrate through our homes and destroy our marriages and destroy our relationships and destroy our kids, but enough is enough is enough is enough. I'm not going to allow it. It's time for us to get a hold of this and say, no more in my house. Come to preach to you and tell you that why does your kid need a thousand dollar cell phone? It is the most dangerous thing in pastoring in 20 years I've ever seen. And it's quiet now. You listen to me parents, I'm not being mean. I know you've got a lot of blockers on phones and things, but Texting is dangerous. I can't imagine having texting when I was in high school. God have mercy. You're thinking it too. And these kids can tap into anything they want to. At any given moment that they want. If they got a question, they can get an answer. They don't need you. 
And what's sad is when they start looking up stuff, it comes through from a worldly concept and not a scriptural concept. Listen, I'm going to be playing in here and I'm going to keep it as PG as I can. But when they look up the word sex, it's going to be from a worldly concept and not from a marital's concept. It's not going to be holy. It's going to be evil and seductive. And we need to get back to a place of holiness uh, where I'm going to guard my kids. I will not allow hell to come into my family. Somebody shout amen. We got to get back to a place of holiness uh, where we protect our children from the world. I remember one time, Shay had an Instagram, my daughter. And I'm going to tell, I'm I'm tell on her today. And she's beautiful, always has been. And all these men were trying to connect on Instagram. Now I want you to hear me, I'm going to tell. She was 14 years old. I did not even know she had an Instagram account. She's okay with me telling this. If I remember correctly, she had over 4,000 followers. I'm about to break country. Some of you know what that means. I've got all kinds of country. I'll take my pastor hat off right now. <clears throat> and uh, if I remember, it was like 4,500 followers on the Instagram because of how pretty she was. And there was some older men following her. And somebody called me and said, Pastor, I don't think you know, but I just had to threaten somebody who would. She had no idea, and I had no idea of how dangerous social media can be. My precious Shay, I love her dearly. She's a great mother, a great wife, a great leader. Goes to a great church. We miss her around here. She is a godly woman. But if it wouldn't have been for a loving daddy who said, not in my house. I I took that thing and I I, I literally took her phone. Somebody said, I can't get a hold of Shay. I said, because she don't have a phone. Well, how do I get a hold of her? I said, I guess try smoke signals. All these boys over age trying to contact my daughter. I said, not in my house. It'll be a cold day in hell for you. Call my daughter. It ain't going to happen. We need to get back to a place, daddies. I'm coming down to my, any daddies in the house, stand with me. I come to preach to you and say it's time for you to draw a line and say, I'm going to do something about this. I don't understand all the culture, but there ain't going to be no snakes in my house. There's not going to be snakes in my house. I'm going to... I know the world says it's okay, but it is not okay. Mamas, I, be seat, mamas, stand with me. Oh, here we go. Mama bears. Give me an old growl. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Love that little boy. He would never do nothing wrong. That little girl, she ain't going to do nothing wrong. Be careful living your life through your children. Be careful what you involve them in because you didn't get to. The church still works. I want you to hear me today. When daddy starts drawing lines. Oh, I'm looking at faces. I want to say. say, Like you got a U-joint in your neck. When he starts drawing lines, let him be the Adam of his family because it's his job to guard the garden. When he starts saying no here, say yes, sir. Oh, see, I'm not hearing any clapping or any shouting right now. But you got to be yoked together. Now I want the men to stand up beside your spouse and say, we're going to do this thing together. Link arms. And say, it's going to be uncomfortable for a little bit. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to shut off some of this stuff. I'm not going to let snakes into my family. I want you to look at somebody beside him and say, we're in this thing together. My God, I feel like somebody shout unto the Lord today. Cross Church is coming out of the world. Cross Church is coming out of the world, making a stand for righteousness and holiness and separation. You may be seated. If we're not careful, we'll let hell to come in and dictate holiness and dictate godliness and righteousness. There's a word called sanctification where God cleanses us from the world. Hell is so mad, and I don't really care. That old dragon, Satan, 
that old serpent called the devil. Revelations 12 and 9. And it says, called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. I want to stop here for a moment. It's amazing that people would always see in devils. Devils fight me. I can talk about devils and you go, ooh, I've seen them in the house. I've seen them when I was in prison. But I, I, I just want to tell you, a third was kicked out. Two thirds are with us. Yeah, I figured I'd get that response. Let's try it over here. One third got kicked out because of rebellion and pride. But two thirds of the Lord's host is walking with his kids. We have more with us than they have with them. And we need to understand that hell's got an army, but you haven't seen the army that the church has. There's more with us than the world has. Somebody say, I'm thankful, I'm thankful. But hell wants to destroy the church. He wants to destroy the family. Somebody say, get over it. We have an adversary called the devil. You need to realize that. Hell wants to destroy us. But the Bible says in verse 11, if you can put it on the screen, Revelation 12 and 11, there is a devil that is in this earth to try to destroy our families. But the Bible says, and read it with me, and they overcame him by what? The blood of the lamb. And by the word, oh my God in heaven, are you kidding me? You mean we can overcome the wicked one with the testimony and the blood of Jesus Christ? Come on, there needs to be something to get in the, inside of us to say, I've got a testimony from where God's brought me from. I can overcome him. Why? Because I've got the power of the blood. Somebody shout, Jesus Verse 12 says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows, read it with me, that he has but a... He's running out of time. He's trying the billboards. He's trying TV. He's trying phones. He's trying everything he can to tempt you. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but if I did, and said, how many has been tempted in areas you never thought possible? Jesus, the Bible says, was tempted in all points, just like we are yet without sin. And in this last day, it's like the ickiness of the world is pulling on the church at every place. It's so tough some days. It's pulling. It's icky. Can I get a witness? It's icky. But the church has got to understand the reason it's so intense. It's because hell knows he's got just a short time to try and take you out. But the Bible says we have overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Your lead at an AA meeting or an NA meeting or an HA meeting or an AAA, whatever we've come up with, is more than a story to get high off of again. If you're not careful, you'll tell it and get high off the dirty details you need to leave under the blood. You hear your pastor today preaching, but that testimony that you've got of how he brought me out when I didn't have nobody but he stood by me. I would have never made it, but somehow in one night God brought me out. That's what's going to get you through this. A God that brought you out then is the same God that's going to, oh, somebody shout with me right now. God brought me out by the power of his blood. You've got to understand with me, there's power in your testimony. You can't overcome the wicked one. Mm, somebody say Amen. Luke 10 and 18 said, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you, come on, power to what? And upon and over all the of the enemy and nothing shall by any means. He said, I give you all power over all the enemy. 
Quit coming up with excuses of why you can't serve God. You have already been declared to have power over the wicked one. But notice what, oh, scoot up on your edge, you see. This about to, if you don't get excited now, you don't have an exciter. Your exciter is broke and needs repaired. Are you ready? Look what it says. I give you power to tread on serpents and one bites by the head and one by the tail. Heads or tails? Heads or tails, you're a winner either way. I don't know why you ain't shouting. It doesn't matter if the Satan starts trying to bite you or the scorpion tries to heads or tails. I'm a winner, baby, no matter what. You better hear this preacher today. God give you the power to tread up on serpents and scorpions. I would somebody just kind of walk with me for a moment. We're going somewhere today to walk. In a little long to press or beat with the feet. I would to God we could make a thunderous noise with our feet today and say we're going to trample some snakes and we're going to trample some scorpions. We're going to have revival. We're going to have deliverance. Somebody help me today. I want you to sit down for a moment. I want you to start stomping your feet for a moment. I got to hear it. We're going to create some thunder in this house. You're going to stomp some snakes and some scorpions today. Anybody ready to tread on some serpents and some scorpions? It's time for a revival. Sister Deborah Brown, it's time for revival. I said they're coming. You got revival when God gets you excited and he gives you deliverance. Your family's going to start coming in and they're going to be delivered because if they see you can conquer your enemy, they know they can conquer theirs. It's time to get anointed in this house today. Somebody clap their hands to the Lord all over this place. We must be very careful. We must understand That the Bible says greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. But we must be very careful where we put ourselves and who we get around. The Bible says, Ecclesiastes 10 and 8, He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it. And whosoever breaks a hedge, a serpent shall bite him. Landmarks. Holiness. Places we don't go. Things we don't do. You say, well, it ain't that bad. Careful. Because if you break that hedge, the Bible says a serpent shall bite you. Man, pastor, he is so conservative. I love that word. What got us here will take you there. Don't question everything. If you will start following the hedge and quit trying to break through it, I've had people say, well, I just don't understand why you do all that you do. And then they're all out in the world messed up and their family's a mess. I'm thinking, just follow along. It's got to get to a place where you shouldn't need 18 weeks of Bible studies to fall in love with the Word of God. You should be digging in it yourself. For if after, the Bible says in 2 Peter 2 and 20, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world... Through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled and overcome, and the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. I have been in this long enough to see people that's been excited on fire for God, I preachers of the gospel, and start being successful. I can't tell you how many times preaching meetings and open doors, and all of a sudden start finding themselves not praying, not reading their Bible, not fellowshipping in the church. Y'all with me right now? And I've watched them. They're right now not preaching the gospel. Who would have ever thought? I'm so thankful for our preachers in this church that are committed to the kingdom, that love the kingdom of God. The Bible says, be careful that you'll be entangled again. How many's ever watched somebody be delivered and all of a sudden now they're back where they were? It's because they wouldn't separate themselves from the world. They're entangled. Somebody say entangled. And if they're not careful, their latter end will be worse with them than the beginning. The Bible says that when you're delivered of a devil, that if you go back, that seven, that same one comes back home and brings seven with it. I'm preaching old school today. I'm going to tell you what, he can stay where he's at and keep his buddies with him. I'm not going back. 
My God, I feel an excitement in this house. How many is committed that I will not go back to I will not go back to what I was. I will not go back. I will not go back. God's been too good to me. Luke 22 says, the Lord, Jesus said, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I love in verse 12, hell has come to take you out. But Jesus said, but I have prayed for thee that your faith fail not. Right when hell was had the perfect plan, you showed up on a Sunday morning. Hell had it all figured out for this week, but you showed up this morning and somebody's prayed for you that your faith wouldn't fail and your faith is intact. Everything you've ever went through, you still have your faith intact. Somewhere, we got to get to the place to say, I will not allow hell. I will not allow those little snakes. I will not allow hell to come into my life, into my home. I'm not going to be one thing at church and carnal at home. I will not allow it. I want to be the same godly man on Sunday that I am during the week. Now I take the pastor hat off and I put a ball cap on and cowboy boots. But I want to be a godly man at home. I want my son to respect me. I want my kids to know I'm a good man. And we got to live not only here what we say we are. We got to do it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Somebody say Amen. Paul, Paul was on his missionary journey. Very dangerous, uh, 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 dangerous time. And they were shipwrecked. Survivors crashed. And they discovered they were on a relatively small uh, island called Malta or Melita. It was 18 miles long, 18 miles wide. A Phoenician word for refuge is what the word means. They landed at a place of refuge and located about 58 miles south of Sicily. Significantly, during the terrifying storm, they had traveled approximately 470 miles west and were now only about 320 miles from Rome. God had not only spared Paul, but through the storm had moved him closer to his destination. He was on a journey that God has sent him on. Somebody say the will of God. And he come across these, these barbaric people. It just literally means it wasn't that they was evil, I guess. They just didn't know the Greek culture. They didn't know their languages. They didn't speak Greek. So here they are on this island called Melita, this place of refuge. And the Bible says that they had kindled a fire and it was raining. It was pouring the rain. I, I told somebody, they said, what's the most miserable weather you've ever worked in? working over the years. I said, oh, about 38 to 40 degrees pouring the rain. I'd rather it be five degrees because once you get wet, you can't get warm. Can you imagine 400 miles, uh, this tumultuous sea and all the storm that's there, and yet he's in the will of God. And, and the, the, the boat came up and came through a small river that came from the ocean and when they crashed in, the back of the ship was tore out and they were floating on boards, and the guards would say, kill them all, kill all these prisoners, and Paul talked them out of it, and they didn't, so they went to shore, and they got there, here this barbaric people, that didn't know Greek culture, didn't know who they were. The Bible says they made them a small fire there, and they were getting warm, they were soaking wet, getting warm, and like any of us, I'm like, my wife always says, I, I just, <clears throat> I can't leave stuff well enough alone. When I build a fire, I have to build a big fire. I can't just build a small fire. It's got to be a big fire. I can't just use a little bit of diesel fuel. I've got to use five gallon. One time I made a fire and went to work. It was 108 degrees in our living room. I just like big fires. Any men with me right now? I I, I feel like I, I have kindred spirits among me right now. How many when you build a fire, is a fire? You know what I mean? And they had this little fire, and Paul goes, and he gets a bundle of sticks, you know. I'd have been like this. Wasn't a baby. Anybody got a chainsaw around here? i show you a fire. I don't want to sit next to it. I'm going to sit back from it. Know what I'm talking about? I don't want a little fire. I want a... You know what I believe in this house? There's already a fire. You can turn off the music right now. I don't have to say nothing. 
after something tangible in the house. Y'all with me right now? Right now in this atmosphere, everybody says, I can serve God, I can do something for God because the fire's burning. Some of you have been dealing with some sins in your life and you felt it leave you in the middle. You felt your addiction fall off of you. Why? Because of the presence of God, because of the fire that's in you. I'm so thankful for the fire of the Holy Ghost that burns inside of us. You know what the Bible says? That he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with the Holy Ghost and with We think that is to be excitement. No. Holy Ghost and with fire. And then he says the fan is in his hand. What does he mean by that? Anybody ever fan a flame? He doesn't send that to give you little chill bumps on your arms. He sends that to get the cigarettes out of your pocket. It's quiet now in here, isn't it? Copenhagen would be in the dumpster after this. He, 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 he fans the flame to get rid of the lust and the backbiting and the hate and the bitterness you've went through. He's trying to get rid of all that sin. Can I take my time and preach a little bit? You say, oh, I feel good, but that ain't what the fire's for. The fire is to get rid of all that fornication and all that lustful spirit, all that stuff that you, that alcoholism that came from daddy and the grandpa. He said, if you get in my fire, I'll fan it and I'll get and I'll burn out all that junk. It's been about to kill you. Oh, somebody praise him for a moment. We're going somewhere today. That fire is to burn out all the junk that's in your life. That hate that's been destroying you. If you get in the fire of the Holy Ghost, it'll burn that hate out and you'll love your enemy. Huh? It doesn't matter what that jerk did to you years ago. It's something will turn and you'll forgive him when you get in the fire of the Holy Ghost. It'll burn all that junk out of you. Somebody shout Amen. That's tough preaching. I said, that's tough. That's tough to hear when you're dealing with stuff. But you're not on your own. The fire is fine. The fire is good. It's sent to help you. When you get convicted, don't leave and medicate it. Because you're depressed and you feel sad, God sent you that sadness so you can fix the mess in your life. Amen? The Bible says that he, he, he took and gathered some sticks. I like what it says. It sounds like me, bundle. Some of you came with twigs. A couple little twigs on the back. Nah. What's Paul doing? Ah, uh, you know Paul. He going to build a fire. Here comes pastor again. Fire's never big enough. No. The stuff we got to burn out, we need a brush fire in this house. Anybody got some logs back there in the back? I need some help up here. Because of the fire we need in cross church has got to be big enough to burn up some junk, man. I don't know about you, but I needed the fire of the Holy Ghost when I come to God. I was a mess when I walked in. And God burnt some junk out of me I thought I could never get rid of. A bundle. And he brought it and put it on the fire. And the Bible says that, wow, notice what happens here, the progression in verse 3. If you can put it on the screen. He gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire that was already present. Notice what happens in verse 3, if you can put it on the screen. And laid them on the fire, and there came a viper out of the heat. Where did the snake come from? Revelations 28 and 3 says that when he laid it down, that bundle... Inside of the bundle was the snake. But it was okay in the bundle. It was okay on his person. Let me put it like this. It was okay in the pocket. But till he got to the fire. The fire began to stir up what was hiding on the person. Some of you didn't even realize the snake that was on you. Paul had no idea that viper was hiding in the bundle he was carrying. But when he got close to the fire, the viper came out. Can I tell you, that's why when you came to church, your family started dealing with some junk. 
That's why your marriage went through a few things. That's why stuff started surfacing in your personality. You're like, where did this come from? Oh, I'll tell you where it came from. You got close to the church and things are starting to be revealed. But you don't leave. You keep coming because if you stay consistent, you're going to get rid of all those snakes. They're going to start surfacing and coming out. And God's going to give you liberty. The snake always comes out of the fire. Whisper in somebody's ear and say, snake can't handle the heat. Can't handle the heat. <laughs> Woo, I feel God in here today. I see it can't handle the heat. Mm. The viper came out of the heat. When it got close to it, it come out of the, it didn't say it come out of the fire, it said it came out of the heat. It's too hot in here for you, huh? I've been preaching like this before, and people, you know, they put their finger up like they're going to the restroom, you know, number one. <laughs> like they're coming back. They ain't coming back. They went to the car. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have did that. Where are you going? Where, where are you? Getting too hot in here for you? Nobody's left. Good. We can move on. Y'all ready to preach a little bit just for the next few minutes? Whisper to somebody say, I'm so glad you can handle the heat. My God, I feel like preaching in this house. When it come out of the heat, it did something it shouldn't have done. Bible says that it fastened on his hand. It bit him. And this is what some of, some of us do. We get bit and we're like, oh. <laughs> Dramatic. I've been bitten by a viper. <laughs> Help me get it off my hand. Now I'm for steps. But let me be me. Can you walk me through about 17 steps? Where's a good life coach right here? Where are you at? Do I have a good life coach right here? Y'all, Max. <laughs> I've been bitten. I need help. Could you take the proper techniques and get the fangs? I'm for all of it. But at what point are you going to try to do steps and think you can make it and not need the fire? Some of y'all are master steppers. But you need your higher power. I see some heads all over the building. Say, uh -huh, I know where you're going with this. But we need to fire the Holy Ghost to burn out the junk as we take our steps. And all steps lead to an altar. When that viper came out of the heat and it got too hot, it bit on his hand, but he didn't take it home with him. He didn't allow it to hang there. He didn't walk around and say, wow, look at my pet I got. Check it out. No, he shook that baby off in the fire. He shook it off and he let God destroy what was destroying him. He shook that baby off. I would have got somebody stand up and say, I'm just going to shake that baby off in the fire and I'm not going to feel the effects of what's been trying to destroy me. Shake that baby off. Some of y'all not even moving yet. I wish we had some Pentecostal people in this house. Say, I'm going to shake this junk off. I'm going to get rid of this junk that's been destroying my life. I'm going to shake it off in the fire. Some of y'all getting nervous in this house. You need to let God burn that junk out of you. That viper bit him. And he didn't even talk about it. He just went on doing his thing. I think I'll go get another bundle of sticks. What's wrong with him? Do you not know he was on heroin? How's that heroin not killed him? How's man? His life. Listen, I need a few minutes today. I'm, I need to preach here just a few minutes. Anybody with me right now? I need to pastor just, I've got to help some of you. You got to understand you're only in your situation right now because you won't shake off the serpent in the fire. But if you shake it off, God would give you deliverance. Shake off all that bitterness and all that hate and all that junk. Shake it off. 
Somebody shout hallelujah in this house. Something's happened in this church this morning. There's been a transition of anointing. God's about to do some big things. Everybody that comes to this church will be delivered the moment they walk through the door. There's a different anointing in this house. You hear your pastor, get ready, get ready. God's going to deliver people. Not everybody's going to be able to handle what God's about to do. If you're willing to let go, God's going to give you deliverance. Notice, 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 notice. People will be delivered this morning. Some of you have already been delivered. The Bible says he shook off the beast in verse 5 in the fire and felt no harm. Some of you have been, I'm going to talk to you as your pastor for a moment. Some of you have survived. They tried to call him a God, okay? Because they didn't understand the supernatural power of God. They didn't understand Surviving. Now, I'm going to talk about survivor's remorse for a minute. Okay? Survivor's remorse. The Lord dealing with me about it. Survivor's remorse is you were in a room, somebody died, and you didn't. Somebody else overdosed, but it didn't kill you. And so, <laughs> and you live with it every day. <laughs> you deal with, You deal with it. Now, I want you to hear me for a minute. Survivor's remorse is recoverable. Would you hear me? Survivor's remorse is also surviving addiction and walking out of addiction. Listen to me. Listen to me here. Look at your pastor. And you, you survive it and you get past it, Jason, and you're on a platform. Some of you are doing, you're so successful because you're a hard worker and you survived it, Marcus. And now people hate you. The people you used to hang around don't like you no more. Rich. Shay. And it don't make any sense. There's people that's so successful in this house. And now the people you used to hang out with don't like you because you survived. And when you try to fit in, Johnny, with the old school, they're mad at you because you got a nice vehicle. That's a good looking Tahoe, by the way. And now you got haters. And you find yourself completely alone. You go home, you don't have friends anymore because you're now success. And the people you, you even try to help don't like you because you're not where they are. And it's called survivor's remorse. When you stand, survived everything has tried to destroy you and you're a success and nobody likes you now. Y'all still here? But I come to preach to you and tell you God will give you new friends. God's giving you a church. God giving you a church family. You need, if you survived it, I want you to stand up and put your shoulders back. And say, I'm going to forget all this stuff that's been killing me about surviving and they died and they didn't make it and I made it. I, I sang it last week. I made it out all right. I made it out. There ought to be something to say, I think you got. I made it out and I survived. It's okay to be a survivor. Could you lift your hands all over this building and thank God that you survived? Music can come. I'm just about to thank you, God, I survived. <laughs> You've done nothing wrong by surviving. You've done nothing wrong by surviving that traumatic event. You've done nothing wrong or tragic from that tragedy that happened. You've done nothing wrong. This mental condition some of you have been dealing with that you survived. You did nothing wrong. You did everything right. You made it. I looked at this church of people. I've sat in hospital rooms with you when you'd overdosed. And you woke up, I'm sitting there, and you wonder how you made it. Some of you I look out here today, I've preached to you in prison. And you're part of the church now. Yeah. You made it. You got buddies who wouldn't change and they're still in there. But you, you, you made it out all right. But you're here. Don't you, don't you get in a mindset that says, <clears throat> I survived and now I've done something. Now I'm alone. No, you just stepped into the process like Paul he got rid of the venomous beast. 
They don't understand because only a God could survive a viper. Listen to me. It's okay that you survived. And what God's about to do next is so powerful in your life. You made it. I should have died many times in my life, but I made it. Made it. I can't tell you the times I should have been killed, but I made it. I know your stories. I, Mark, I don't know how he made it. I could go around this room and I'm close to somebody. I don't know how in the world. Justin, Lord have mercy. Jan, you made it. How many has been in the church and dealt with some junk since you've been in the church? Whew. Look at somebody say, I'm still here. And I know I've preached a little long today, but I've needed it and you've needed it. The Bible says that Paul went from there and there was a man who was sick. He laid sick of a fever on that little island And the Bible says that It was of a bloody flux it caused It sounds bad Paul goes in Lays hands on him and heals him And then when they found out that that man was healed They brought others also And when he prayed for them on that little island in Melita They were healed And they took care of Paul Until he left out of there Going on to meet Caesar, which will ultimately put him in prison for the kingdom. And we read the whole New Testament, and Paul wrote two thirds of it out of a jail cell. It was his life. But he survived to do the work of God. I preached to you in this house, and there's over 350 some people in this house, and usually when we're at that number, it's closer to 400 by the time we get, we get all of our numbers in. That's a great crowd in here today. I want, want you to hear me. I love you so much. There's nights I don't sleep praying for you. Hell wants to take you out. I challenge you to stay in the fire. I challenge you to get in the fire. I challenge you to lay on the altars. I challenge you to give your life to God. And no matter what walk you are, if you've been bitten and you're dealing with the viper too, you survived it and you're dealing with that all the way to God's using you, stay in the fire. All over this building, I challenge you to just walk to an altar today and say, God, I'm going to be committed to you. And I want to be used of you. And I will not allow hell to take me out. Right before you come and get us, God, I will not be lost. I will stay in the church and I will stay committed. Shake that beast off in the fire today. I know there's not enough room to pray, but if you could come and just lean at the front, please press in. I know people are still coming. Just kneel down where you can. Keep coming. Keep coming. Bring somebody with you. Let's gather in today as a church family. Say, God, I'm going to get rid of all this stuff. I'm going to get rid of all this stuff I've been dealing with, God. I will not allow it to take me out. I will not allow it to take me out. I will not allow it. I'm committed to you. I'm committed to your cause, Jesus. I will not. Come on, lift your voices with your faith. Let there be a prayer to erupt in this house. Let there be a prayer to erupt in this house. God, forgive me. Come on, let there be prayers of repentance. God, forgive me, God. I need you, Lord, to change me. I need you, God, to change me. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. God, let there be deliverance in this house. Let there be deliverance in this house today. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Come on, I hear you pray and lift your voices with your faith. Let there be a war cry in this house today. I will be delivered. I'm going to be delivered. I'm going to be delivered. They're getting ready to sing, but I want you to pray. Don't be in a hurry in this house today. Something
today or rebaptized it's been years if you'd like to be baptized today you've never been baptized we'd like to baptize you today in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ our ushers are in the back you, there's changing rooms in the back if you would like to look at somebody beside of you and say would you like to be baptized today they would our ushers will serve you in the back but what I feel right now is just to lift our hands all over this house and cry out to God and let there be a victorious shout in this house for what God's done today can we do that all over this field? Let there be a shout of God. I believe you'll lead me through it. I believe you'll get me to it. I believe that you will do it right now. Something has to break. I believe. Something has to be. 
total so far. We're just waiting on them to come out from the changing rooms. Amen. Now to I walk the streets of gold I'll sing of how you saved my soul This wayward child has found his way back Oh, oh, he picked me up turned me around Placed my feet on solid ground I think the master I think the savior Heal my heart, change my name, forever free, I'm not the same. I think the master, I think the savior, I thank God. I cannot deny what I've seen, got no choice but to believe my doubts are burning. Like ashes in the wind I said so long to my old friends Burden and bitterness You can't just keep it moving You're not welcome here Now till I walk the streets of gold I'll sing them how you save my soul This wayward child is found I thank you, Master. I thank you, Savior. I thank God. Hell lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Hell lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Hell lost another one. I am free. Yeah. Hey. 